I built a personal search engine. What is a personal search engine, you might ask? And it's pretty simple. It's a search engine built by me for me to search across things I made on the internet instead of the entire internet itself. The second question you might ask is why, and that's also pretty simple. I was on the internet, saw the OpenAI Embeddings API, decided it would be a cool project, and I built it in about a day. With all that out of the way, let's talk about how I actually went and built this thing. The project had three rough steps, getting the data, hosting the data, and then actually writing the web app to search through all of the data. OpenAI took care of the hard part of the search aspect of the project for me. All I had to do was send it over to their API, but more about that in just a bit. So the only thing I really had to do was get and host the data. To get the data, all I had to do was convert all the YouTube videos on my channel into text and thankfully, because of YouTube's transcript API, this was really easy. It was just a few lines of Python code and then boom, I have the transcripts to all of my YouTube videos. That's not even the best part. The transcripts are already timestamped and broken down sentence by sentence, so I don't have to do that myself. Why does it need to be broken down sentence by sentence? Well, if it wasn't, then I would be comparing large chunks of text to each other, and that would make for A, really boring search results, and B, it'd make it really hard for me to find whatever I'm looking for on the internet, which is why it's awesome that it's broken down sentence by sentence. Now that I had all of these sentences, the next thing I had to do was actually get their embeddings from the OpenAI API. Now let's talk about what embeddings actually are. Embeddings are basically just a way to represent text as vectors, which allows us to conduct mathematical operations on them and lets us do cool things like semantic search. Semantic search is a little different from normal search in that semantic search has a better understanding of the meaning behind words. So if you have two words that are pretty similar in meaning, but not related at all in spelling, it'll still be able to identify them as the same. For example, if you were to search Python and Anaconda on my videos, you'd get pretty much similar results because Python and Anaconda mean very similar things. They're just spelled very differently. Now, if you did that with like a regular search engine that was just matching straight up text to text, that's not going to happen. And that's why semantic search is so cool because even if you don't remember exactly what you said, but you kind of remember the idea of what you said, if you search your transcripts, you'll be able to find them. And that's why we're gonna be using the OpenAI Embeddings API. Now, before we can understand exactly how this works, we need to understand just how much data we're dealing with. I sent over the text and got the embeddings back. I want you to guess how big the file was with embeddings. Without embeddings, it was two megabytes. Pause the video and take a guess and then resume. If you guessed 972 megabytes, you're right. That's a very big file and it's only gonna grow larger as I incorporate more data from other sources and other YouTube videos, which means I probably won't be able to do a local naive search and let's talk about why. So the way we actually measure whether two search terms are similar is by using something called cosine similarity. Remember, we're representing all these texts as vectors. So if the vectors are pointing in roughly the same direction or have the same angle with them and whatever thing you're measuring it against, then you can say that it probably means similar things, which is where cosine similarity comes from. It's a pretty Pretty similar math formula. I mean, you can see it on the screen right now, and it's very easy to implement. But if you're trying to do that with all of the data you have and looping through all 972 megabytes of data, that's pretty slow and it's going to be a lot of compute on your local computer. So we're gonna to need to use some sort of cloud computing resource to make this easier for us to do. I needed a place to host all of these vectors to make it easy for me. So after a lot of serious research, and by that I mean just clicking the first link OpenAI recommends, I chose Pinecone. Pinecone is really easy to use. All I had to do was write a few lines of Python code and it shipped up my entire database onto Pinecone for easy usage. And it, I didn't even really have to do any work after that. Pinecone literally provides you a function to find the top K most similar vector to a vector you submit, which is really, really useful when you're building a search engine. Now that the entire backend was set up, it was time for me to actually build the front-end web app with my non-existent front-end skills. So I booted up NeoVim. Did I mention I use Vim, by the way? I use Vim, just so you know. Anyways, I went ahead with the classic Next.js app and Tailwind CSS for styling, and I went ahead to build the app. The app itself is pretty simple. It takes in a search term, sends that search term over to the OpenAI Embeddings API, gets a vector back, takes this vector, and then sends it over to the Pinecone API, and then Pinecone sends me back the top five search results that match that search term. Pretty simple, straightforward, not a whole lot of things to mess around with. So I sat down and I wrote this out, I cranked it out in a couple of hours, and then I had to get to work on styling it. The web app isn't instantaneous and it doesn't look the best, but I'm kind of happy with it. It's quick enough for my processes and it's pretty useful. I mean, Pinecone is great because you can send up metadata when you push your actual data up. And my metadata that I sent up was the link to the YouTube video and the timestamp, the relevant timestamp for the text. So when I get my data back, I can just concatenate the URL with the timestamp. And then when you click on the search result, it'll take you to the exact moment in the video that's relevant to what you're looking for, which makes it very, very useful for me when I'm looking back through my archives. Please don't roast my styling. I know it's bad and I should have spent some more time fixing it, but I couldn't really care that much. I mean, I would much rather build something new instead of trying to fix all this. I mean, I should actually add some more features such as incorporating more data sources, just making it look a little better and operate a little bit faster, but I would rather just build a new project. 
If you want to try it out yourself and maybe add some of your own features, I'll leave a link to the GitHub repository down below and you can do whatever you really want with it. All you have to do is just use your own OpenAI API key and your own Pinecone API key. And it does cost a few cents to embed all of your text, but it's but it's pretty cheap. And I also left a link to the notebooks that I use to like get all of my embeddings and transcripts and send it over to Pinecone if you want to look at that for, as kind of a tutorial as well. But that's all I really have to say about how I built this project. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, it'll help me out a lot. And anyways, YouTube is telling you to go watch this YouTube video right here and their AI system is really good, so go check it out. Thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.